this is Matt from the Dice of the Round Table, and in this video we're going to talk about cruel seas. And I'm going to do a discussion and some simulation on situations in a game and how that would come about. First, some of the components. These are our unit cards that come in cruel seas. You're going to have your unit name down here. And then you're going to have inexperienced, regular, veteran, point cost. I'm telling you right now, points, for example, it's a 75 point difference from inexperienced to regular and a 25 point difference from regular to veteran. And this is the Vosper 1, right. which looks like this with a two torpedoes, one on each side with a heavy machine gun in the back and a 20 millimeter in the front. Compared to this being a Vosper 2 with 90 is 20 more points for an experience. It's a 50 point difference instead of 75 for regular and a 70, 35, 25 point difference for veteran. And when possible, I'm really liking veteran when possible. And the Vosper 2 has four torpedoes on it. So, on the back half of the card, you will see information about what it has. So for a Vosper 1, it tells you what your hit points are over here. So this has 35 hit points on it. And then you'll see the 10s down here, ones up here. What I've found to be very helpful is glass beads. I found these at AC Moore, um, in the, um, what was it, the floral aisle, when you're putting decorative beads in a vase. So I literally will put it over where it needs to go. They can be knocked around, however, it's better than the little cardboard papery things they give you in the starter set and in the other expansions. But this way you have, so this would be 30. So I will literally put it on the 30 and one on the five. And then when I take damage, I'm going to move them around accordingly. So in the game, eventually you can purchase extra equipment, um, depth charges, smoke screens, searchlights, radios, and so forth that have other impacts. Down here, we have critical issues. So in the game, you can get critical hits. So we have engine status. If there's a damage to the engine, we have in the middle bridge status, rudder status, fire status, and then crew status. Because you can have fires, you can have engine hits, bridge can be damaged. And then in here, underneath where it says it's going to be Vosper, it'll tell you what it has. So for example, this is going to say twin heavy machine gun times one, 20 millimeter gun times one. Torpedo times two, and that has two, one on each side. Machine guns. Every ship in Coral Seas will have two mid machine guns, and they're usually midship with a 360-degree arc. And then you have the smoke and depth charges listed as possible options for this. And then down at the bottom, it's going to tell you what your movement is. So on this one, slow is 12, combat 24, full speed is 36. And these are in centimeters. We'll talk a little bit more when we get into it. It gives you what your turn angle is. It's either 45 or 30. And then it will tell you what type of size ship it is. So this is a small ship. So uh, that's British. Uh, this is a German one, for example. So this is an E38. So for point comparison, for a regular crew, this is 155 points. 30 points more than the British Vosper 1. The British Vosper 1 has 35 hit points. This has 55. It's a very big difference. This has your two machine guns midship. This has... Um, this one on the car is a 37 millimeter and a 20 millimeter in the front. The E boat is actually a little bit more interesting than the ES100 because the S100 has a couple more options to it. 
So when you're looking at the S100, for example, you have the option of replacing the 37 millimeter in the back with a quad 20. And then it has two, a twin 20 millimeter, but it has an armored wheelhouse that has the option to include a depth charge. So that's where the additional equipment will come in. Either way, a lot of information. This has 65 hit points, but the big difference between the S38, S100 versus the Vosper is it's a medium ship. So medium ship is going to be, this is the 38 because there's no gun in the middle. The S100 has the third gun, has a middle mount right there. Otherwise, they're basically the same ship. This has an armored um, uh, bridge where this doesn't armored wheelhouse. This is just an open wheelhouse instead of armored. So, but overall, when you take the two and compare them next to each other, small, medium, pretty big difference. And that's where we get into the wakes. So this is a small wake, this is a medium wake behind it, and then this is a large wake. And basically what this is telling you, you're going to put the after the ship on the line for the speed. So we have slow, combat, full. So if you're going stop, you're just here, there's no wake extended. If you're going slow speed, now we have a little wake. Medium combat speed, now we have a bigger wake. And if you're going to full out with the motor, then you have a bigger wake. So this is a medium ship, so you would use a medium one. So a medium ship with a wake is like that compared to a Vosper at full speed, which is a small ship. Da, da, da. Very different size wise. So, wakes only really matter if you have an inexperienced crew because if for some reason you have a ship like this, let's say we have a Vosper, and at some point an inexperienced crew, if you're moving and you cross the wake. They have to take a crew test. So that's the components. You're also going to end up using D10s because this is what you're going to roll for to hit. And D6s are your damage. So we have the components. The other thing you're going to need is a tape measure or these. They give you three of these in the starter set. And because all movement is in centimeters. So you can actually hook these up together ta -da, to make it bigger. But what's really nice, we have a to hit calculator shorthand on the back of this. So let's talk about the different phases. So the first thing you're gonna do is you have the initial phase and it's a Warlord game. Warlord does random activations. So you'll need either a dice to represent each ship. You can use bold action dice, which is what I have. I have some green ones and brown ones. And some type of bag to pull the dice out of. So literally what would happen is the dice go in the bag at the beginning of the turn. You'd reach in and pull out. I pulled a green one. So this would be for British. So whoever is activating this color, you would give them the dice and they would activate their ship. They would do their movement. And at any point you can turn, you can shoot during your activation. Once you've completed your movement and your shots, then if you want, you can issue a launch torpedoes. Or if you forsake those two, you can issue an order such as repair or reload torpedoes. So I'll get into a basic little 
game now and let's just start seeing how things go. I typically when I teach games to other people I usually go here's the basics but let's get right into it and see how things actually flow because they will make more sense. So let's head to the table and the little mat that came with the Cruel Seas for some example gameplays. So we're going to start with some basic movement. Down here we have two Vosper 1s and we have an Ebo S100 down here. So I got my cards down here. I should actually have them switched, but I'll be okay. So working on this, I'm taking my measuring. And like I said, everything's in centimeters. So if you use a tape measure, not every tape measure has centimeters on it. So make sure the one you're using has centimeters. This is also a traditional Warlord game. So the rules are constructed with no pre-measuring. However, if everyone agrees and you want to, you can play with pre-measuring. It's in the rule book. However you want to play it. It's a very friendly game. It is a very lighthearted game if you want to. Very designed in my opinion for some fun narratives and specific scenarios making some interesting terrain i have lots of ideas i've been coming up thinking of i have not executed yet i have uh, something else i need to work on right now but i will hopefully get to them sometime soon in the next month and maybe i'll be able to share on somehow those I'm building. So right now I'm starting with my British at combat speed and my German at slow speed. So we're going to reach in here and see what goes first. So I have my German boat. So on your turn, like I said, you're going to declare if you're going to change your speed. You can move up or down or keep the same. So you have stop, slow, combat, fast. So if you're at fast, you can't go any faster. So you can go from fast to combat speed, combat speed to slow, slow to stop. So if you wanted to do that, that would take one turn, two turns, three turns to get there. But right now, this is going slow. On here, we look and on the card. I should have an extra one. So, on the card, I'm going to look at it, and it tells me 14 is slow. You're going to notice that the slow, combat, and full speed, they're in increments. So, 14 plus 14 is 28. That's your combat speed. 28 plus 14 is going to give you 42. That's your full speed. So why that's important is you have a notch here. You can do this one of two ways. You can either set this right in so the bow of the ship is sitting right here or lay it next to it, however you want. So this has to move first. There is, if I remember correctly, one German boat. It's the R boat, which is allowed to turn before it moves. Otherwise, you must move, then turn. So, you must move. I'm going to keep it at slow speed. So, I'm going up to the 14. I'm sliding this out. And then you see the red and yellow lines. These are representing 30 and 45 degree turns. So, you can do it with this or with a wake marker. Wake markers have it too. So, the medium small ships in this scenario can turn 45 degrees. You turn from the back of the boat. So I'm going to hold it at the back of the boat and turn it this way. What I'm trying to do is get that broad side. I'm going to move my wake marker and keep it here. For this scenario, I'm going to have the German boat be regular and the British be veterans. And you're going to see the discrepancy and that veteran regular bit. So we now have this. Every 14 you can turn. Every time you can turn is an opportunity to shoot. You can only shoot once during your activation. So if this was going at combat speed, I could shoot now or I can move again, turn, 
and shoot. So every time you move your increment, be it 14, 12, 13, whatever that increment is, you can turn and then you can choose to shoot at that time. But remember, when you activate your ship, you're saying what your speed's going to be at that point. You're not adjusting it as you go. So I'm going to be here. So I'm going to use the rules reference here. These are in the back of the book. You can download and print them. They are amazing. The two hit tables here, the damage is on here, and your ranges are on this one where you have your two hits. So you have your sequence of play, firing gun, torpedoes, to hit table, torpedo hit table, range table, and skill test. So, sequence of play, you move, resolve, so you move the activated ship, fire the activated ship's guns, launch torpedoes, resolve damage and critical hits against enemy, repair your ship, remove plumes. So, firing guns, allocate targets to each of the guns, measure from the gun position, work out modifiers. Roll to hit, per D10 per weapon system firing, roll damage, place plume markers per System of 37 millimeter or larger that misses. Damage rolls of natural six. That's a lot there. We're going to go through one at a time. So I have move. So actually, you know what? Regular, inexperienced veteran. That way we get a feel for how bad inexperienced are. So I've got three guns on the boat plus two machine guns. So we have a 20 millimeter. I'm going to target the front two at this one, the rear 20 quad at this one. A 20 millimeter has a range of 50 centimeters. So I'm going to line it up at the gun. Missing, missing, and missing. The arc on the back gun ends up being like this. So if you can kind of imagine, it can pivot all the way around. The middle gun does have a 360 degree arc, so you act like it's actually a raised platform. The machine guns are kind of movable, but sadly the machine guns are only 30 centimeters. So I have no shot. No pre-measuring, but my opponent, German player, basically just told the British player, if you move a little bit, you're within 20 millimeter range. And the British on the... Vosper 1, this is a Vosper 2, oops. The Vosper 1 has a 20 millimeter in the front, just like the German boat does. So, oops, kind of gave it away. So, we know what's left in here are two British dice, so I'm going to pull them out. Ta da! British! Surprise! Let's activate the Veteran. So the Veteran of Osper 1 can move 12 centimeters. They're going combat speed. This is going to reduce to slow speed. So I'm going to move up to my 12, slide out, and I'm going to reduce the weight down to slow. And then I'm going to turn to see if I can get my rear machine gun as it has a heavy Vickers machine gun in the back. Twin heavy. So my front gun has a range of 50. I am in range. That's at 40, say 42 centimeters. Sadly, my heavy machine gun has a range of 40 and that is going to drop me right off into the water here. So my heavy machine gun is just going to be right out here, no shot, misses. So if that misses, there's no way my 30 from my machine guns are going to hit. So I'm at 5. Over half range, 3. Is my crew inexperienced? No. So they don't get a minus 2. Is the crew a veteran crew? Yes. They're getting a plus 5. Now. Am I going full speed? No, that's a minus two. Am I going slow? I am. That adds a plus one. Am I stationary? That would be a plus one too. If I was moving over 30 centimeters, which is possible, 
at full speed, you're going to get a minus one. Now I look at the, my shoot, the target. Is my target moving over 24 centimeters? No, its last movement was only 14. So it doesn't hurt. Is it going slow? Yes, easier target. So now I'm at seven. Is he stationary? No, he's slow. But if he was stationary instead of a plus one, it would be a plus two. So you don't want to stop if you can't help it. Target size. This is a medium vessel. So it's not tiny. Tiny gets a minus two. And that's going to be like one man subunits, really small stuff. Is it small? Vospers are small. That's medium. A small vessel gets a minus one. Is it larger, bigger? That would be a plus one. Medium, kind of neutral. So I'm at seven. Is it obstructed? Nope. Nothing's blocking my view because that would be a minus two. Do I have a fire director, someone to help with the firing of the guns? No, that's going to be on larger vessels. And do I have three or more misses from 37 millimeter guns? No. So I need a seven or less. This is a game where the hit is the target number or less. If you ever reach zero, that's an impossible shot. It automatically misses. So I roll it. I got a seven. So I then consult. This is a 20 millimeter gun. It has hit. A 20 millimeter gun gets 3d6. So at worst minimum, I'm doing three points of damage. At most, I'm doing 18 points of damage. I roll it. I got two fives and a three. I'm going to add that up. Comes to 13. I'm going to subtract it from the hull of the S100. So it goes from 65 to 52. And that activation is done. I'm not launching torpedoes because torpedoes do not affect any ship smaller than a large. So that is something that you have to find in the errata and FAQs. They fixed it so medium ships cannot be the target of a torpedo strike. That was in the base rules where a medium ship could be hit with a torpedo. That's not the case anymore. So inexperienced crew is going combat. I know they're going to be harder to hit with, but I want to try to see if I can get closer with my machine guns. So I'm going to go 12. I can make a pivot to get a little broadside going. And then I'm going to 12 again. I could have shot during the first turn, but I chose not to. And I'm going to just nudge it a little bit that way. So now I'm going combat speed. So inexperienced crew, really hard to shoot as it is, just made it harder. So I'm going to measure. I'm going to try to see what I can shoot from my guns. So my 20 millimeter has range of 38, so it's over half. The heavy machine gun is at 36, so that can strike, but the machine guns are out of range because they're going to be about here at 30. So the extra movement gave me one extra gun to shoot, but they're inexperienced. So I'm starting at a five. Both guns are over half. So I'm down to a three. They are an inexperienced crew. I'm down to a one. I'm going combat speed. I get no penalty because I'm not going over 30 centimeters. I'm only going 24. My target is slow, so I get a plus one. So I'm now up to a two. And it's a medium vessel. So my experienced crew was hitting on sevens. Let's say I kept them at combat. That'd be a six. A six to a two. Big difference now. Really big difference. So on a two or one. So my 20 millimeter got a one. 
God of One. And like any other game, every chance you get to shoot, take the shot. And the HMG, the heavy machine gun got an eight. No dice. So I get 3D6. A two, two, one. But in this one, let's say I actually got a critical hit, so we can go through what a critical hit is. So let's turn a six into a two into a six. Six one two, let's say in this scenario. So I have a two plus one plus six, nine. So I'm going to inflict nine points of damage down to 49. However, every six on a gunshot is going to give you a chance for a critical. So if you roll five sixes, great for Yahtzee, great for criticals. Every time you get a critical, the opponent gets to cancel a critical. So a regular crew cancels criticals on a five or six. An inexperienced crew cancels only on a six. And a veteran crew cancels on a three, four, or six. So this German crew is a regular crew. So I need a four or a five or a six. And I got a five. So I canceled it. But let's pretend it didn't cancel. Let's say they got a four. Oops. Then you roll a d10. That's a five. And you will consult the critical hit table. The critical hit table, this is the printout from the book, has multiple things. Engine hit, bridge hit, rudder steering, fuel hit, gun hit, torpedo hit, extra damage, ammunition, accessory crew hit. I rolled a five, so that was actually a gun hit. And each of them will tell you what to do if it doesn't actually qualify. Sometimes it'll say, oh, you now take the gun out instead of an ammunition hit. If, um, what does it say, place an out, if the ammunition goes off, that's a, that's a bad example. Torpedoes. So if there's no torpedoes on the ship, like big ships may not have a torpedo that can be hit, then instead of torpedo hit, it's extra damage. So we have... A gun hit. So this says, pick one gun position has taken a horrible hit and is destroyed or crew is disabled. Pick the closest weapon position to the fire's gun as the gun that has been hit. If any doubts are had, roll a dice and decide at random. And then you would take a little token and place it on the card that says, out of action. No way you're going to be able to see that. And I will place it to cover the gun so I know that gun is out of action. For this German player, that would be really bad because it's the one on the bow. Okay, so let's talk about inexperienced crews weeks. There's a whole lot of corner cases in here. I'm just trying to touch on some stuff that may or may not happen in a game. So we're going to talk about this terrain and then torpedoes. And then that's where we're going to end up. So right here, let's say that this regular crew is traveling. This inexperienced crew is crossing their wake. They cross their wake. According to page 24 in the rule book, there is no crew test. I misspoke earlier, so there's no crew test. Now you're gonna roll a d6. Five. It says on a five or six, they take a turn to starboard. So you would literally turn to 45 degrees. So it says on a one or two, they go to port. Five or six, they go starboard. Three or four, they go straight on their next third of movement. So basically, as soon as they've done that, they cross that wake, they're going to get shot in one of the directions that you roll. Nothing to save it. It's just what happens. So inexperienced crews keep them from traveling on a ship's wake that is the same size or larger. For the British, that's really dangerous, especially if you have inexperienced crews on a small ship, because everything's bigger than you, except for tiny, which you don't have, really. So let's talk about sandbars. So, sandbars, this is one I've done. So, there's tokens in the book about sandbars. But sandbars can be found on page 45. So, basically what this means is any ship that is medium or smaller gets a plus two to their test. So, 
the idea is they don't have much draft underneath the ship, and so they can actually skip over the sandbar. You would take a D6, roll it to see if you pass. So that means on a medium ship, small ship, tiny ship, an inexperienced crew needs a four up. A regular crew needs a three up. A veteran crew needs a two up to pass. And if they pass, they move through. So let's say this is the crew. I just rolled a six. They pass. Uh, they move through 12. They skip right on the sandbar. No issues. Now, if you are not a medium ship or smaller, then you have to roll to see if you take damage. If you fail the test, a small ship takes 2D, or I'm sorry, not a small ship, a ship going slow takes 2D6. Combat speed is 3D6, full speed is 4D6. And larger vessels get no bonus. They just take this roll to see if they pass. I got an R6. Really good. But if a larger vessel fails the test, they take the damage. And are now stuck. And cannot move for the rest of the game unless there's special rules in the scenario. Sandbars are easily seen. Hopefully you avoid them. That uh, so now we're talking about terrain, rocks, islands, outcroppings, so forth. Small, medium vessels don't care. They're gonna drive right by it. Don't care at all. Large vessels and bigger do care. They are required to be 10 centimeters away from an impact. So, 10 centimeters away. Right now, this ship is starting not in harm's way. However, let's say it's going combat speed. It's going to go six and it's going to end in 10 centimeter range. So it's now the activated ship. So it's actually colliding with terrain. So the attacker is the large vessel. The large vessel versus terrain is 3d6. So you would roll it, resolve your damage. Because it's now hit had damage, it has to move five centimeters and have a 30 degree turn. So it is moving five centimeters. And at some point during those five centimeters, I need it to turn safely so it's out of the range. This gets really problematic because if you can't, let's say I did this, It's safely out of this one, but now it's colliding with this one. So it will be a bumper boat situation. So large ships take heed of rocks. Large ships are not fun to be near coastal areas. That's why they really weren't clear channels. So rocks, block line of sight. Huge ships, so we're talking about destroyers, corvettes. This is a minesweeper. Cannot see this boat. Can see this boat. Cannot see this one behind the rock. A huge ship can see this one behind the rock. And I think that covers basic terrain. Sandbars, rocks, and we can talk about collision. We just saw that. Um, collisions are also super annoying. The vessel that the, the vessels that hit each other cannot shoot for their next activation. Basically everyone's scrambling to get their feet back under them and get their bearings. The only other thing that I have not covered is orders. So you can give an order if you're at slow to repair or at a full stop. So if at those two times, you can actually give an order repair. 
and there's a chart for it depending on if you're inexperienced or regular or veteran. Inexperienced crews, slow speed repair a D6, stationary 2D6 of damage. Regular crew, same thing. At slow speed, at stationary, they do 3D6 and can remove one critical effect. Veteran crews repair a D6 and remove one crit at slow speed. At stationary, they do 4D6 and remove two crits. Um, most games I've played at this point, I've done about 8-10 eight, eight, games. Um, I think I've seen two crits or more on a ship twice out of like five ships per size, so say about 10 ships, 12 ships per game. So it's not, not very often, but if you get someone that plays a lot of sixes, I feel for you. Um, there's corner cases, there's aviation, planes can come in, do bombing and torpedo runs. I'm not covering that. Maybe I'll do a supplementary thing for it. But this was a basic to get you an idea. The only other thing I'm going to set up for right now is torpedoes. Because torpedoes are awesome against large ships. Okay, we're set up for torpedo time. I got my large minesweeper, German minesweeper, sitting right here. Nice juicy target for my two Vospers coming out. They've been sent out to remove this hassle of a minesweeper that's trying to lay mines in the harbor. So, just for... Kick, here's the card. Okay, so, I'm... Um, I'm going to activate, and it's a British dice. So, it's going 12. It's going combat speed. It's going 12. But at that point, when I can turn, I can shoot. So, I'm choosing to shoot the minesweeper, take some pot shots, and launch my torpedoes. So, I'm going to measure up for the shot. It is at 40. Nothing else is going to be in range. I'm at a 5. I'm going combat speed, so I don't care about that. Um, this ship's going combat speed. It's not going to hurt me or make it better. I'm not veteran, but I, it's a large ship. It's a plus one. So on a D10, I rolled an eight, missed. But that's not what I really wanted to do. What I really want to do is launch these torpedoes. So you're going to put the torpedoes on the two, roughly sitting. You have a 30 degree angle from straight on over that you're going to launch these. So position matters. So I've launched my two torpedoes, but I'm going combat speed so I can still move. So I'm moving another 12. And now I'm going to get out of the way. So I can move something like this. And I'm going combat speed. Torpedoes are in the water. Torpedoes move at the beginning of your activation. I've launched them. It's now the end of this activation. So next round, those torpedoes will move when I activate this boat. The other thing is, if this boat sinks, those torpedoes move before anything else does. So it's kind of cool. Next dice is the German. It doesn't like what it's seeing. So it's going combat speed 6, and another 6, and it's going to unleash itself this way. So, this, I already know this boat launches torpedoes. That one has not. I'm going to shoot everything I have at that other German boat, or the British boat. So, these big guns have a range of 120 centimeters. But this, these are in range of 50. It has a 20 centimeter, or 20 millimeter gun up here, which has an arc shooting in the back and the sides so i got one there and i actually have a 37 millimeter gun here so 
what I'm going to do is shoot my big guns first. Fives, he's going combat speed, doesn't matter. It is under half range, doesn't hurt me. My target is going combat speed, so they are moving 24, so that takes one away. They're small too. Small ships are annoying. Now I'm down to a three. So my front big gun, which is hits on a one, and my back gun hits on a ten. This one hit, this one missed. Any gun that's bigger than 37 millimeters, you add a plume for a miss. Get three plumes on your target, you get a plus. So I have a 20 mil, a 37 millimeter. I'm going to shoot that. That hit on a one because I needed a one because I'm over half range, so I'm down to a one. This one needs a one, miss. So the big guns are um, three inch guns. The three inch gun fires 66, three six. The 37 millimeter is a 46 gun. I would roll this up. Lots of, I got four criticals. Otherwise, that's 10, 17, 21, 27, plus 18, uh, 37, 45. That Vosper only has 35 hit points. It's blown up. I've eliminated it before it could launch its torpedoes. So, timing matters. You saw some big guns get fired. However, next turn, two dice. British. Activating this baby. Torpedoes travel 40 centimeters. They can activate three times before it goes away. So a torpedo has a range of 120 centimeters. So this is where it gets tricky. Line it up. I am hitting this boat. It is literally hitting in this one. So this one's gonna hit about here. This one sadly is traveling this way. It's gonna be here. If for any reason there was other large ships over this way, I would keep track of it, but it's gonna miss this target. It's not gonna hit anything else. This one's gone. Now we roll to see if the torpedo hits. Let's see if this little Vosper can get revenge for its partner. 9 out of 10, it's probably not going to sink this ship in one shot. However, we go to the torpedo chart. It starts on a 4, not a 5. My target is a large vessel. It goes to a 6. My target's not stationary. But it's also not traveling between 15 and 30 centimeters. It's going to move 12. The firing crew, if it's veteran, gets a plus one. If it's inexperienced, get a minus one. We're going this regular. So on a six or less on a D6, it hits. It's a four. We're not done yet. Because now we got to see if it's a dud. So a veteran crew. A one is a dud. A regular crew, a one or a two is a dud. And an inexperienced crew, a one through a three is a dud. I got a two. So, this was a regular crew, that torpedo would do nothing. Very sad. However, let's say it wasn't a dud and it did hit and it was a three instead. It does 16 D6 points of damage. So, you would roll up all your dice, roll them. Any sixes are re rolled. There's no critical hits from a torpedo. You would actually re roll your six and add that extra damage in. So, We've had some fun with the big guns, little guns, torpedoes, sandbars. With that, this is Cruel Seas Basics. Hope that helped. Cruel Seas has a lot of little things in there with searchlights, flares, aviation, suicide, 
torpedoes with the Japanese. I haven't even talked about fleet building. But in the end, if you got the idea, veteran crews make such a difference, giving you an extra 20% to hit on all your guns every time they get to shoot, giving you that increased chance on the torpedoes not being a dud, on that increased chance of the torpedo actually hitting and not just going under the ship or whatever the miss would be. Um, an extra 10% on the torpedoes is awesome, especially when you got to roll twice. Because even on a D6, it's giving you more than a 10% chance of hitting. Either way, I hope you found what you have needed. Cruel Seas is awesome. This is Matt from the Dice of the Round Table, signing off. Keep gaming.